Praise the Lord. You are tuning into the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. This ministry is designed to bring forth revelation and encouragement and to enlighten your minds. Now listen as the woman of God brings you revelation from the word of God. Oh, you this morning. 
Some of y'all get ready to see the results of your praise. Look at somebody and tell me, you about to see the results of my praise. See, that's why I got to praise God on this morning. Hallelujah. Because the Lord said, when you praise me, I'm going to bring the results. When you praise me, I'm going to bring the results. When you praise me, I'm going to bring the results. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them,
Y'all better hear God. He began to tell me, he said, he said, I got to establish some things in your life this week. <laughs> Firmly establish them so that it won't get caught up in the chaotic confusion of the atmosphere that's getting ready to come forth during the week of the elections. He said, because there's going to be a changing of guards. And he said, and in the change, the demonic spirits that are associated with the candidates are going to have free course to move about throughout the nation. He said, because the people's minds are focused on the election and not on what's going on in the atmosphere. They had an Amasha. He said, my people are debating candidates when they should be praying. He said, they come and kiss each other behind two people that are not even of me. He said, how can you say one is better than the other when both of them have forsaken my laws? He said, but if my people pray, they can in Abasha, they can stabilize the atmosphere. So that what I need to come to pass won't be hindered. And then but the problem is there's no more focus on these debates and I ain't looked at more. God told me, don't you get caught up in that. He said, you pray. He said, that's a demonic distraction because the enemy knows that I'm getting ready to perform great things for my people. And so he's bringing a distraction and he's causing a civil war among the saints and causing them to become divided right now so that the power of agreement cannot go forth in the earth concerning the righteous. Oh, y'all almost say that right there. He said, it's just a demonic distraction. He said, but the enemy has sucked my people in. Yes, yes, he said, either way to go. Oh, God. Either way. Either way. Gonna, you're going to need the Lord. He said, I'm going to use either one to get my people back to me. He said, they're going to make a song choice. He said, because they forgot that neither one of them are me. He said the people made the choice. They had the opportunity to just have me. But they wanted a king. Come on now. And so now he said there's getting ready. And he said, I'm gonna use either one. For just he said, I'm going to manipulate them like I did Pharaoh. He said, and they going to think they're coming against my church. He said, but just like Pharaoh, I'm going to show them the church not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. He said, I'm going to show them that I'm still God in the earth. Yes. Yes. He said, so the world gonna experience chaos while my people are in peace. He said, this is a... He began to tell me, he said, this is almost like a recreation of what happened in Egypt. Because he's bringing us out of bondage. The totality of the bondage that we've been in. That's why people don't understand why God is so so adamant now about us being holy and righteous. Because remember, the difference was 
how the people survived was because the blood covered their household. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the thing is, the Lord said, you're going to have to tell your loved ones they better get in the right house. We need to understand that we're we're in an impossible situation now. And the Lord wants to deliver us out of the impossible things. That's right, that's right. Ooh. Hey, my God. Because you need to understand. Hallelujah. And he took me to when the man had the son that had the little boy that had the unclean spirit in Mark, the ninth chapter. Hallelujah. And how this child was overtaken and consumed by the enemy since their youth, since birth. The enemy had taken over this child. And some of us need to understand that we're in situations that have attached to us since we were born. And we're in all these cycles. We're going through the same cycles over and over again. We're not coming out to freedom. We just get a temporary relief. And then that same thing comes back to try to destroy us again. But look at somebody and tell them, but not this time. Because this is the time that the Lord is telling us to get it together. Look at somebody and tell them, you got to get it together. Look at somebody else and tell them, you got to get it together. Look at somebody else and tell them, you got to get it together. Hallelujah. Look at somebody else and tell them, you got to get it together. Because you need to understand that he's getting ready to perform his word yeah, yeah. on your behalf. Yeah. Look at somebody and tell them on your behalf. On your behalf. Hallelujah. Look at somebody else and tell them on your behalf. On your behalf. Hallelujah. And so he's getting ready to perform his word. Hallelujah. Because you need to understand that this was an impossible situation. <laughs> because how many know that there are certain things that only God can do? And we're in a situation right now in the earth, not just in this country, but in the earth, that we have to have God to come in and perform his word. There's got to be a turnaround now. And see, God is so, so merciful toward his people that he's willing to give us warning before destruction. Amen. And he's saying in this season, that we got to get to a place now where he can be able to bring us out. And some of us have set, going through the same cycle over and over again. But the Lord's saying in this season, hallelujah, in order for you to make it, you're going to have to come out of those things that are causing you to walk contrary to the ways and the will of the Lord. Look at somebody and tell them, you got to come out of it now. Hallelujah. And so he's saying now, he said, because even, even with our children, there is activity going on with them. And I don't care what nobody say, little pookie pookie ain't being cute. Cussing you out. Come on now, that's not cute. That's right, that's right. That your child is cussing you out. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's Being right. rebellious. That's right. Uh, hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to be in that sap. Yes, Amen. When it's young, tender. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. I hear the people of God talking about a time out. I said, our time out was time out. Mama, don't hit me no more. Come on now. Hallelujah. And, and we hear people talking about you shouldn't discipline your children. Hallelujah. And they're going to tell you to don't discipline, but they'll hunt them down like a dog in the street and shoot them down and kill them. Stop looking at me straight. We just got to be real. How you going to tell me to don't discipline mine, but then you turn around and kill them? Because you think they're doing wrong. 
you already preaching. Come on. Hallelujah. And then our children have to have prayer as they go out each day. Hallelujah. You need to pray for your children before they even go out to school in this day and hour. Because you got crazy people even teaching them. We got pedophiles and molesters over our children. Stop looking at me, Spanish. Hallelujah. We got devil worshippers teaching our children. Stop looking at me, Spanish. Hallelujah. And then they go tell us that we can't tell them about Jesus, but they tell them about everything else. You preach Yes. And so the Lord began to tell me. He said, "You tell the people of God they gotta cover their children more better." I remember when you we didn't get to go spend the night nowhere. No, we didn't just send our kids off to anybody's house. Anybody babysitting. We didn't even trust relatives. They didn't let you just go and just spend the night with your friends. They didn't just let you go somewhere. They had chaperone. That's right. Come on now. Hallelujah. They chaperoned us. Y'all looking at me straight. Y'all don't know about chaperone. Your child, your daughter, eight, nine years old at the mall with a group of other girls. That, that devil is the lie. Huh? That's how come our daughters and stuff are getting pregnant at 12 and 13 now. Because we ain't got adult supervision going on. Because the parents somewhere partying they said. Getting high and doing everything else. And see what you don't understand. You can't expect your children to do better if you're showing them so much work. Walk in the box. You trying to figure out why your daughter got so many issues. Because you don't t introduce her to about 50 uncles. That she didn't even know was her uncles. Come on. You know how they did, you know, in the old days, they called them uncles. They didn't call them boyfriends. Right, right. This your uncle. Yeah. And then bring the child in confusion. Because they looking at uncle in the room with you. Right. So when they uncle did mess with them and molest them, they thought it was all right because you was going so with going with the uncle too. Because somebody and told him we coming out of an impossible situation. He was his father. He was concerned. In the ninth chapter of Mark, he was really concerned about his son because he had tired. He was tired of seeing the enemy doing everything to his child. And some of us got grown children that we about sick of seeing the enemy just take them over and do anything he want to do to them. We got children. And see, we got to learn, pe people of God, parents, hallelujah, we got to learn, hallelujah, that it's going to take more than you, hallelujah, just praying. You need to get in some activities with your children. You ain't got a morning that you can't go to the PTA meetings. How in the world are you going to say the Lord didn't lead you to go check on your child's progress in school? You lying in the spirit of... Come on. That's right. God is about family. That's why when he's looking at us, he calls us his family. Y'all looking at me straight. Hallelujah. He's about family. Come on now. Hallelujah. Your child should you should be sitting down with your children. Helping them with the homework. You don't know what you're doing. You need to get some refresher course. Come on now, because this new math is something else. And they got advanced studies now. I know that's stuff right. that we didn't learn when we was in school. That's why you need to keep up on stuff. That's right. Come on now. Hallelujah. How in the world are you going to have a decent conversation with your child and you don't even know what's going on? I sit around the young people so I can learn what's going on. So I can know how to minister to them. Not to become a young teenager like them. What I look like running around here. With a mini skirt on. Hold the top. When you get a certain age, you need to act. Baby, you're not 16 no more. Sit your cellar light self down somewhere. 
Tell me our young people can't hear God. You train them up in the way that they should go. Teach them how to get in the presence of the Lord. Huh? You can't teach them if you ain't getting in it. Do your children even see you pray at home? Come on now. Hallelujah. My kids, when they was growing up, they, they all the man knew mama was going to be in that bombard heaven. Hallelujah. Coming through during the middle of the night, laying hands, praying over my children. Come on now. Hallelujah. Laying hands while they sleep. Finally, when they got older, they told me, Mama, we used to just wait, act like we were asleep, waiting on you to come in and just lay your hands on us. See, our days would go good. They was talking about how, how, how they looked forward to you coming in, laying hands. They said it made us know that you loved us and was concerned about just getting about our soul. Come on now. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, we're coming out of this impossible situation. Here he was. He was concerned. And that's what we need to get to right now. We need to get concerned about souls like never before because people are dying. Hallelujah. Without knowing Christ, they're dying. We got too many young people dying in this hour. And then in the Messiah, hallelujah. And we need to get on our job now. Where are the prayer warriors at? Where are the parents that were at, my God? That will take their children in prayer at home. We knew how to pray for our children. Oh, God. Look at somebody and tell them, we got to come out of this thing. Hallelujah. We got to get them out of this impossible situation. The world is going into chaos and confusion. Hallelujah. Trouble on every side. Hallelujah. Everywhere you look, there's trouble. Hallelujah. Situations coming up. Lies being lost. Come on now. Killings everywhere. Hallelujah. Murders and everything. Rapes and molestation. Hallelujah. And we're sitting up in church. Hallelujah. Messiah. Hallelujah. Just mad at each other and having issues among each other. When we got problems there. My God, that are taking place even in our own home that we ain't even dealing with. Hallelujah. Oh, my Joshua said, and for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what the new thing is. It's for me and my house be serving the Lord. Hey, my God. If you're in my house, you got to serve God. If you're in my house, Lord 
because we're about to turn some locks. It's some things get ready to open for us today. Somebody's child get ready to be delivered. I'm telling you, God showed me. God showed me this morning. People's children coming out of prison. I saw it vividly this morning. They were walking out. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to turn some things. Hallelujah. He said, because some of my prophets are locked up. Some of my pastors are locked up. Come on now. He said, some evangelists are locked up. Don't look at me strange. He said, they got my children locked up. He said, my daughter, and there are some that have genuinely repented. They ain't just got no jailhouse religion. They got a real relationship with God. And God commanded to bring them out. Hallelujah. And then I heard the spirit of the Lord say, there were people whose finances were locked up that he's getting ready to loose now. Some of you got money held up. I'm here to tell you that God's getting ready to loose it now. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the key going in the lock right now. Let's hop on the most high. And God said, I'm getting ready to unlock the provisional sources that you need so you can survive in this hour. Lift your hands and say, God, I thank you for the keys now. I thank you for the keys now that you have put in
Jesus. It is established by God. Hallelujah. That this will be a week. That people will begin to experience manifestations. Thank you. Hallelujah. Such a yes, The Lord woke me up this morning. He said, I'm getting ready to give you some surprises this week. He said, you don't know when it's coming. He said, but you better keep a consistent praise. No matter what happens, he said, praise your way. Because the demonic distraction is going to come to try to take your praise this week. This is condition. It's about praise. Huh? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody and tell them this is about a praise this week. It's about to lift your hands, walk to God back there in the blue. Lift your hands and tell God, thank you for my week. I keep hearing this stuff. The Spirit Lord keep telling me, he said, tell them to go get houses and cars. Now don't go get no garbage. <laughs> I'm stepping into something this week because the Lord has established this Those that understand it, you've got to understand. This is a week. Sometimes God set aside and say certain things are going to happen at certain times. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Remember, He declared to the people of God that at the end of 70 years, there was going to be a turn. See, he'll give, he'll give a set time. That's what people don't understand. They all say, he, you shouldn't set no time. I said, wait, I see in the Bible throughout the world where he would set times and say that this going to happen at this time. This going to happen at this time. And then he'll say, in three days, this going to happen. And in about two couple shot, he would say in the first month, but he'll set a time in the earth realm. For it to come to pass. Concerning specific days or specific weeks or months, I take notice of that because I notice in the world when he would speak something and say it was going to come to pass at a specific time, that it would come to pass. And, I, and, then also, and see, that's why people don't understand. Real prophets can speak a time. Remember, Elijah told them it's not going to be rain or two for three years. Didn't he say so? He said that they're not going to even experience this for three years. You're not going to even go through this. You can set God and Amosha will put in your mouth a time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so when the Lord began to deal with me and said, This week, I'm going to do some impossible thing. Hallelujah. That thing stirred me up. I'm messed up right now. I don't know what to do. Hallelujah. Because I'm just in. I'm on the edge right now. Hallelujah. I'm on edge. I don't know when it's going to happen. All I know is some sudden is going to take place this week. And some things and doors that need to be opened are going to come open. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and thank God. Because man and woman of God, Apostle Jones in the Lamosha, I heard the Lord say this week, you're going to perform a miraculous thing in a concerning property this week. He said this week, I'm going to do something in this Hallelujah. Expect some money this week. It's so you better expect some money this week. Expect the breakthrough this week. Expect some of your child, your children to be saved this week. Some of you, your spouse, hallelujah, this is to everybody. Some of you, your spouses have left you. But this week, somebody coming home. Somebody need to be jumping up now. <laughs> Maybe don't want the book. <laughs> Some of y'all don't want them back. <laughs> they your spouse. They just got themselves in a bad situation. But they still belong to you. Yeah. That's right. 
Look at something. Look at somebody and tell them. This week. This week. God is going to orchestrate a miracle for you this week. Look at somebody and tell them this week. This week. Lift your hands and tell God, thank you for this week. Thank you, Lord, for this week. Hallelujah. Some of y'all that's been creeping and peeping. And acting like you married the folks. This will be a good week to get married. This will be a good week to get married. Amen. This week. Only this week. Look at somebody and tell them this week. Y'all looking at me strange. Look at somebody and tell them this week. Y'all looking at me strange. Look at somebody and tell them this week. Look at them and tell them this week. The Lord began to tell me. He said, I'm getting ready to straighten things out. We ain't going to be playing house and not there. This week. Somebody better make it right. I hear the Lord saying this week. Why you waiting on the wedding and you don't already play house? Hey, thousand of dollars for a wedding and you already don't set up house. Just get the paperwork. Call it a day. You don't brought everything you need in your house. You don't really even need a reception. Yes. All right, now. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. The only thing going to be different is God going to sanctify the sanction of your sexual activity. Yes. And then the favor of God going to get released. Right. 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 Y'all let me strike. The Lord told me, he said, oh, come on in your side. He said, you come against that spirit that has people cohabitating Amen. in the house of God without marriage. Amen. I'm talking about he ain't moved in, but he's there all weekend. Come on now. That's still shacking. Yeah. It's because he's there three days and ain't there the other four. Still don't mean nothing. He still got his clothes there. He still got his toothpaste and toothbrush and everything there. And you can't go out with nobody else and socialize with no other male figure. So that hey, that constitutes a covenant. Y'all looking at me strange. That constitutes a covenant. He wants you not to talk to nobody else and you don't want him to talk to nobody else. I'm in love. He said he in love. All this love, but can't do it right. Somebody telling a love lie. Come on, man. Wow. Don't you let nobody jeopardize your soul. Because they're too cheap to take care of you. The only reason why people don't want to get married, they don't want the responsibility of a household. They figure I can shack and we can go half on everything. I ain't going half on nothing. Y'all looking at me strike. We gonna we gonna we gonna pay half of half of the rent. No, sir, you live here. You pay all the rent. You want to be the head? Since you want to act like it, we're going to let you do everything you're supposed to do. I bet you go ahead and get married then. When you realize you're going to have to pay all them bills. Come on now. I told the women of God, I said, don't cheapen yourself. Come on now. Then men, don't let no woman cheapen you because the women now are not wanting to get married. Like God is legalizing fornication. Yeah. Mm. Like he legalizing fornication. Like he legalized that. Come on. I don't know why I'm in here, but I know God is saying it's time for the people of God to do it right. We want the blessing of God. You want to be in the ark of safety. When these things begin to come to pass that are getting ready to take place, you want to make sure the blood's covering your household totally and fully. 
Hallelujah. Because when the economy goes down and all that, those that know they God, they're going to survive. Huh? That's why I make it my business to live holy. Come on. Come on. Y'all looking at me smiling? And when you begin to tell people that they can hold out, we're going to be celibate for real in this house. Come on now. Y'all looking at me smiling? Well, when you start talking about getting rid of sex partners, you're going to I don't make allowances for boyfriend and girlfriends. That ain't in the word. He talked about husbands and wives. That's right. Amen. 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 Ain't talking about making no allowance for no boyfriend. Check the men out. Check the men out. Amen. Ain't talking about in that way either. I'm talking about go out and eat with him. See how he acts. Amen. All right now. You right. See if he go when the bill come, if he don't reach for it. <laughs> That's a warning sign. Oh, look, y'all better listen. That's a warning sign. Because if he's not willing to pay for a meal, he's not going to pay no bills. That's right. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. That's wisdom. You're teaching us today. Yes, you are. Good teaching. Good teaching. That's right. Watch him. Come on, we, we don't do no dirt. Don't ask me to go out there and tell me that you want me to pay half. What? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> Ain't no 50-50 going on. No, sir. You're not going to take me to no cheap, another put <laughs> and be always taking you to a buffet, he oh, cheats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. He cheats. And be always taking you to a buffet, he cheats. Yeah. I wish he would try to pull me through a drive through window. He's going to be driving through the real. I take myself to the best restaurant. I get what I want to eat. A lot of times we go into places and they say, what? and I tell them I want this, I want this. They say, well, it's extra. And I look at them and I say, I said, I said, I want. Say it again. I ain't gonna never order nothing I can't pay for. Come on, That's what I said. Amen. Chill. I, I order what I want. Don't want to have me strike. I order what I want. And if I treat myself good, you're gonna have to be able to outdo me. Because I can take my own self out to eat. What can you do more than I'm doing? Amen. Right. My daddy told tell him in a minute, you ain't taking my daughter out this house if you can't do better for her than I do. Oh, that's right. That's true. That's the word. That's the word. Oh. He said, I can do it. He said, I get her hair done. What you going to do? Uh-oh. Hey. 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 He said, I find something to wear new every week. What can you do? Come on. Uh-oh. He said, the, the refrigerator stopped. What can you do? All right. <laughs> All right. What can you do more than her father? Mm. 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 He said, so she's not looking for somebody just for that. What else can you do? Uh, okay. He said, my dog are happy. What can you do? Ah. Mm. Make her happy here. He made them. He made them give him a list. <laughs> That's what y'all need. Y'all need. Y'all need to take some. Take some of these men to men. I got certain men. If a man want to talk to me, I say, hold up a minute. Got somebody I need to talk to. Cause they say I know the questions to answer me mm-hmm. to let you know if he's any good. Uh-huh. So we gonna watch out for you. Cause we ain't gonna let nobody damage you again. 
So they got to go through a process. I got an application. Uh -oh. <laughs> they got to fill out. Yeah. They're looking at me straight. You're going to fill out this application. Yeah, sign that contract. I was wrong with some of y'all. Y'all don't ask the right question. Right. All y'all want to know is this. <laughs> you got some money? $10 is money. So he can tell you, I got some money. That might be the $20 in his pocket. He didn't lie. He told y'all I have some money. Y'all looking at me strange. What's the plan? Whenever God gives a man a, reveals his wife, there is a plan already set for the marriage. He has a vision that he gives that man for the marriage. Ask the man what is the vision for our marriage. And if he starts stuttering, Stumbling, he ain't got nothing. That means he expect you to be the man of the house. And you might well stay by yourself. If you're going to have to worry about bills every month, y'all looking at me strange. Until he come up to par. Now he might even be your husband, but he might not be finished processing. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. God ain't going to give us nothing that we're going to have to cry every night over. Yep, y'all won't say nothing. Like, Amen. Oh. Amen. See, that's what's wrong with you women. Y'all is a piece of man more than anything. Oh, no. What piece you looking for? Oh. <laughs> I thought that was the most ridiculous statement any woman can ever make. Amen. A piece of man. What piece you want? Amen. Come on now. Lift your hands and say, God, help me to come out of an impossible situation. God, help me. I don't know why I got on this, but I'm going to close now because I got to go because I got an eight-hour drive. How to do it. Lift your hands and tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, because they're not going to know how to manage. Uh oh, that's not that quiet. He's all right. We thank him. We thank him, Apostle. Somebody got to know how to keep the money flowing in the house. Yeah. If both of y'all spending everything, y'all ain't going to never have nothing. Amen. You got to remember there will be some days when unexpected expenses arrive. You can't live paycheck to paycheck. That's right. That's it. You got to learn how to save. Some things you got to say, I can't do right now because we got to build up. Yes, right. Especially when you first get married. Yes. That means you can't put $200 weed right there. <laughs> you better learn how to take that cheap hair and make it look good. <laughs> Until God blesses you. Don't look at that beast right until God blesses you because sometimes you're not millionaires yet but you got a vision but you got something but you ain't going to have nothing if both of y'all spending everything so somebody in the family going to have to have the wisdom how to budget the money and whoever's best at it need to be see it was a time when the men could bring the check home and give it to the women that's what we grew up in my daddy, when he worked, he came home, gave the money, my mama took care. But mama took care of the bills. And, and, you know, make sure groceries and everything in the house and everything was on. You give a woman your check now. You almost got to pull a pistol. You ain't going to know anything until they pull it up, throwing your stuff out on you. So in this day and hour, you got to have some sense. Whoever is the better manager, that's who needs to be in, 
You know what I'm saying? Over the finances. Whoever is the better manager. It ain't going to take nothing from your manhood for her to be able to manage the money. If you read the Proverbs 31 woman, she... She did what she did because her husband brought the substance to her. And then she was able to take it and bring increase to the household. You're supposed to bring increase, women. You can't, you can't take all your girlfriends out to eat every week. The problem is, some of you have set yourself up for your girlfriend to get your man. Because you're telling too much of your business. You ain't going to know how good my husband treats me. Well, I look like sitting around a bunch of single women talking about, oh, my man. That man make me speak in tongues when I don't want to. Uh -oh. <laughs> you got all them single women sitting among you that ain't got no man. Wow. And now they're looking at y'all. Because yeah. you don't advertise a good man. Uh -oh. That's what you did. So don't get mad if some of y'all really crazy. I'm not leaving no woman in my house that ain't safe. Yeah. How you go out of town and leave your girlfriend at your house? Oh, you come out. I'm gonna leave. Let you take care of my husband and cook for me. God, please. That's somebody trying to set you up, man. They trying to set you up because they trying to get a divorce so they can get some alimony. Cause they don't saw something else they want. That's why they're trying to set you up with their girlfriend so they can get some evidence. While they out of town, that's why they leave the girlfriend so she won't know what she doing. And the girlfriend in on it to help set you up. You better hear me. Oh, some of y'all thinking now. She always sending a girlfriend to the store with me and stuff. And I, yeah. That's a setup. Look at somebody and tell them set up so they're all here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then women, men, watch it if your wife or your husband is going away every weekend, almost every weekend with their friend. Oh, something else working. I look crazy with a husband at home, and every weekend I'm out with my girlfriend spending the weekend somewhere. Come on now. What's wrong with that picture? It's some lesbianism going on somewhere. Well, I'm going to leave all them biceps and triceps. At the house where I go look at somebody got the same thing I got. That's devil crazy. And then you sitting up there talking about she doesn't win a girlfriend. They like they like to hang out and go shopping and stuff. You just as foolish. And then when you come home and catch them in the bed, you wanna almost die. That's right, that's right. But you you loud them that. Have some wisdom, men. If she want to be with a woman more than she want to be with you, there's a problem somewhere. And then women, if he want to be with his buddies more than he want to be with you, there is a problem somewhere. What do you want to look at a big old hairy man every weekend for? When he can have a sweet, soft walk. Man, please. You said, oh, he just like to hang out with his buddy. Uh-uh, baby. There's some toe touching going on somewhere. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Lift your hand and say, God, we're coming out of impossible situations. What a 
of us. And so in this day and hour, you got you got to make sure that whoever God sends to you, those of you that are not married, and some of you that are married, you need to begin to ask God to open your eyes of understanding as to why you and your husband and wife are not getting along. Because yes. sometimes it's because they never wanted you. You were just a prop. So you need to begin to pray that your eyes of your understanding comes open concerning these things. Because it's a big thing now, especially in the body of Christ. We don't know who's who. I guarantee you, one approach me, I got a taser. I'm going to tase her, so help me go. That approach me. I'm going to have the taser minister. I ain't playing. I ain't playing. Because we don't stop this foolishness in the house. Amen. You act like you don't know somebody trying to hit at you. You know that woman trying to hit at you? And that man? Come on now. Certain gestures men don't do to other men. Then if you marry, mm, come on, marry folks. Mm. Ain't no other man have no business getting more compliments from you than you give to your husband. You can't be more concerned about another person and not concerned about your spouse. I wish my, I think my. My ex, my ex, and I was crazy. <laughs> One time we was out somewhere, and he knew I had money, so he, he gonna grab this other woman's bill. <laughs> 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 my ex, my bill. <laughs> <laughs> to grab this other woman's bill. I said, son. Just... <laughs> In my sanctified voice. Do you want your grill? <laughs> Are you going to need that grill in the front? I said, how are you going to bypass me and pay for another woman's food? I said, the only reason why this fork ain't in your hand is because God told me to don't do it in the public. I said, you can do whatever. But when you're in my presence, you're going to respect me. Come on now. Come on. Look at somebody and tell them we come out of the impossible situation. Lift your hands and tell God, thank you. Thank you, God. I just had to do a little teaching. You know, I like to teach. Hallelujah. I love to teach. I just love to teach. Hallelujah. I can teach for hours. That's why I can't go to these traditional churches because they, they, you know, they be trying to pull my coattail and I have to turn around sometime and rebuke them. Then tell them, okay, I'm not coming back no more. I, because as long as the Holy Ghost is flowing. That's right. You shouldn't have a no problem with it. That's right. people can, you can tell the Lord is moving because people are responding. Amen. And they're getting something. There's yeah. a difference when you're up and ain't nothing being said. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Lift your hands till God thank you. Thank you, Father. I have a passion for leaders and passions for marriage. Because I've been in the bank. I had a good one. And he died and then I got a bad one. That was crazy. And so, but he caught me at a vulnerable time. That's why I can help women not to make decisions when they're grieving about something. And so you have to be careful because they'll catch you and you think you're in love when it's just that you were looking for comfort. Y'all look at See, I'm, I'm transparent. Can't nobody tell me nothing I don't know. And so I'm going to tell on myself. And so it, it becomes a transparency. And we have to, we have to, as men and women of God, begin to tell some of the issues that we have with them to let the people know that they can come out. Sometimes things are hid and the people 
think that you got to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, ain't none of us in here perfect. Not right not so we, we can't sit up here and make you want to be perfect when we're not perfect on mm -hmm. I do tell people we strive for perfection. And then I'm perfect in Christ. It's a difference. Because you are perfect in Christ. In Christ. In Him. So that perfect, yes, you can be perfect in Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, but I thank God because I know He's given me to do some things for you, the people of God. And I want to admonish you that this week, don't let nothing distract you. Because he's getting ready to do great things. Lift your hands, woman, right there behind you, behind you, that one. You lift your hands because as sure as you was praising God back there, the Lord said, tell her I've already established what I'm going to do for her. He said, tell her it's already established and it's already done. And you're doing the good thing by praising him. Hallelujah. Somewhere in there as you was praising God, I saw when your faith connected with the word of God as you were praising him and you realized some things get ready to come to pass. So the Lord said, keep that play, faith position and understand that he's getting ready to perform his word. You can praise him like a wild woman if you want to today because things are changing for not only you. God said, I'm working some miracles for your loved ones that you have had on the altar and you have prayed so much for. Hallelujah. And there have been some grief in your heart about some things, but the Lord said, tell you, today he's about to make your heart glad. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I feel the anointing breaking that yoke of the that that love one. Hallelujah. And the enemy got them in the predicament they in. But God said, I'm going to bring them out. And you can praise me because victory is theirs right now. Hallelujah. The Lord said, I'm dealing with their heart, their mind, and their soul. Hallelujah. This time, I don't know why I hear him saying this. He said, but tell them this time it's going to stick with them.
Father is this week. We're going to see the results of this revival this week. And I don't know about nobody else, but I know I should. You even look different. Just give me you. That's all I want, says the Lord. Hurry about shot. 
So it is an hour now. Turn around. Hallelujah. Your life is not your own.
the day. The Lord said to tell you that you got victory today. He said, tell my daughter to shout a shout of victory because victory has been done. You have just finished listening to the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. You may write her at Apostle Barbara R. Thomas, P.O. Box 13291, Durham, North Carolina, 27709. Thank you for supporting the ministry.